spelled Gochiza. G O U Q I Z I. G O. Yeah. Now it's over here. It's this one right here. This one is Lyceum barbarum. Lyceum barbarum. It grows taller than the other species, and uh, the leaves are generally a little more lance-shaped, not so oval. The other species is right over here, and it grows lower, more horizontally, and it's got leaves that are a little bit more oval than, than long and narrow. <laughs> And that's Lyceum chinensa. Yep, that's it, Gochitsa. It makes those red? It makes the red berries. Yeah, you can pass that around uh, to show everybody. You can take it off of there. This one technically is called um, Ningxia Gochitsa because of where it comes from in China, in the Ningxia area of China. Um, okay. The plant is a perennial. As you can see, it's a woody plant. It's a shrub. It, it goes dormant in the winter time. And when it goes dormant, it just loses its leaves. So it's not dead. It just You still see the woody stem, but there's no leaves that are on there anymore. It's deciduous. Right, it's deciduous. You do want to cut it back because the fruit's going to form on new branches. So you want to cut it back pretty hard. You know, you can cut it back to where there's like a foot or one to two feet of uh, old stem and then let new branches grow off of that. And regular soil, water? Yeah, it likes sandier soil. It, it likes uh, drier air, drier environments. If the air is too damp or the soil and air is too damp, then it'll start to get mildewy on the leaves. And the leaves will drop off during the middle of the summer and it weakens the plant obviously and then it may not form many flowers or fruit. Because it comes from northwestern China, it's a, it grows in a very dry area. The air is very dry there, the soil is sandy and dry. Um, so is it a drought tolerant plant? Yeah, it can be. I mean, you need to water it consistently if you want the fruit to form. Uh, propagation of it, I, you know, here's the thing with this. Um, the material that you're probably going to get in most cases came from seed and the problem with that is is that genetics being what they are you get a lot of crappy results out of seed you'll get a plant but the quality of the fruit is really poor and that's true of what we have with this lyceum chinensa that's this other species that we've got here and there's another one over there that the fruit quality is is terrible it's bitter and it's small, it's really lousy. Why is that? Because it's been grown from seed. Uh, the, the, the material that you get, you get the goji berry, you see these things in dragon herbs or, you know, in, in Whole Foods. Those are taken from plants that were picked out, just like the They were picked out over a long period of time, and then they kept on growing the same plant reproductively, vegetatively. So, that they kept the, the genetics the same. And when you start to grow things from seed, you maybe and frequently do lose those qualities. This one I grew from seed from uh, some material I got probably from Dragon Herbs or someplace that had really good gochitsa. And I got lucky, this one's not great, but it's actually not bad. It's fairly decent. I wouldn't call it an exceptional quality of gochitsa, but it's a thousand times better than this stuff. You take just one of the dry ones and... So what you can soil? do is you can take the fruit yeah. and you just soak it overnight in a glass of water and the next morning you can squeeze out the seeds and they'll, the good seeds will, will go to the bottom, the bad seeds will flow. You just pour off the water and then remove any of the fruit that's still left and let it dry in a paper towel. And then you go ahead and plant it with a, you know, maybe about this much soil over it. Count it about a half an inch to an inch deep. But, like I said, you're taking a chance and you'll get crappy plants. You might get some good ones, you never know. But you're going to have to wait a few years until it produces fruit, you know? Well, at least be two or three years, depending on if you put it in the ground or not. If you put it in a pot, it's probably going to take longer. You can also reproduce the plants from cuttings. Very easy to grow cuttings. And they also do run. You've got to be careful. Particularly the chinensa, I've seen sometimes, it really runs a lot. So, 
you know, it can be a really difficult thing to eradicate, and it also tends to move around. So you have to be careful about where you plant it, or otherwise it's going to invade other things. So from the branch, you just put it in the water? The branch, what you would do is you take the branch and maybe sections about this long. You can do it longer, but this is good. And put it into uh, a container, like a flat or a pot that's kind of shallow but larger going across and put it in at an angle like about a 45 degree angle so a bunch of the stem is underneath the ground and then some of it's sticking out but it's like this and you can do that like in the fall or, or winter or for like early winter and then usually what will happen is it should be fine in the spring and it'll start to form new growth. Um, if you got a, if you find a clone that's a, you know a plant that's really good quality, then that would be the way I would reproduce it. Don't do it through seed. If you've already got a plant that you know is good, reproduce it through the stems or through runners, because then you're going to keep the same quality. You're not going to lose that. Um, so this plant is a tonified blood plant, and it's a, a really nice tonic, as you've probably read and heard about on the internet now a thousand times. Um, it tonifies the kidney and liver yin and the blood and it's great for problems where there may be early graying of the hair and, and, and sore back and knees and uh, the poor vision and um, there may be even some development of like perimenopausal symptoms in, in women who are at that stage where they start getting night sweats and hot flashes, things like that. Um, what's that? Uh, it could be useful, but it's not really designed for helping the pressure of the eyes. That's not really what it's, it's for. It's, it's going to help the floaters. Um, so it is used for brightening the eyes. It does help tonify the eye, uh, essence and brighten the eyes. And again, for blurry vision, weak vision, uh, floaters as uh, she was just asking about and um, it's also used uh, for helping with um, the lungs and tonifying the lungs the, the yin aspect of the lungs so again it could be used for what what, that, what I was talking about before consumption that kind of wasting pattern with uh, maybe TB or something similar where there's a chronic infection and somebody's ending up having this chronic cough body is kind of getting weaker and starting to become uh, emaciated. So it's a really good tonic. It can be used for infertility too. It's used a lot of times in, in, in formulas for men and women for infertility because it helps tonify, as I said, the essence, which is uh, this material that's very important for fertility and, um, and the blood, which is also important for helping with uh, fertility too. You, lose, you use the berries, but there is another remedy that you can use from the root. And for that, you don't need to have a really great quality like you're going to need for the fruit. You can use even something, you know, that's crappy that, fruit-wise that uh, is like this Lyceum chinensis. So the bark of the root is also a remedy. It's not on there, but it's called digupi. And that's D-I-G-U-P-I. And that's an herb that's used for clearing heat and it's said to cool the blood. Um, it can be used when there's heat in the blood, uh, possibly from an infection. You start seeing signs of bleeding uh, from this heat that's gotten into the system. But it's, it's a, used primarily, mostly, for what you would call yin deficient heat. And this is where somebody ends up having night sweats. It may have come after a fever, after an infection, which damaged the fluids in their body. And so now they have night sweats, or it could be even while they're having the infection, if they've got night sweats, or like perimenopausal women I was talking about, where they've got night sweats or hot flashes. Uh, usually you'll see the signs of the heat are stronger in the afternoon and the evening. And, uh, and that's when the person's going to feel hotter and have the, the problem with the sweating more. Um, 